Okay, this is 11.1, .1, the special theory of relativity. So in the last lesson, I just went over a couple ideas that are related to special relativity um, that will hopefully make this process a bit easier to follow. To start with, we have the inertial frame of reference. You might remember this from uh, one of our earlier units where we were talking about inertial frames and non-inertial frames. So an inertial frame is a coordinate system that moves at a constant speed a constant speed or zero it's not moving at all okay and in an inertial frame the laws of inertia hold When we say the laws of inertia, we mean um, Newton's first law, the, that an object in motion will stay in motion and an object at rest will stay at rest. Those laws are only true in an inertial frame of reference. So one that is moving at a constant speed. Okay, and our principle of relativity here is, this is, think way back when, relative motion, before we had any idea that, um, that light behaved in this strange way, the principle of relativity has been around for a long time, and it says that the laws of motion are the same in all inertial frames. So that principle has been around for a very long time, and it's sort of an assumption that we, that we make that it doesn't matter what inertial frame you're in, the laws of physics should be the same. We have a picture here, below, of somebody who is on a um, li little train cart, and he's throwing a ball up and down. And in the first um, picture, we're looking at his frame of reference. So he's moving along, he's moving in this uh, horizontal direction, but from his point of view, He's standing still, he throws the ball up, and it falls back down, and everything's fine. That's his inertial reference frame. Whereas the second reference frame here in part B, we have an observer off to the side, seeing this person go by at their speed. And, of course, the person throws the ball up and back down, and... The ball lands back in the person's hand, but the person has moved over a certain amount at that point. The ball has moved with them. So you can see that these two pictures look different, and it's just from two people's perspectives. The first one is from the person who's moving from their perspective, and the other one is from the person who's standing to the side. Okay, and so hopefully that sort of concept works for you, because the next one here is the same thing but with light. So if we have a light on a train, when it's not moving at all, the light should be moving at a speed of c in both directions, the speed of light in a vacuum. When the train is moving, it has this velocity horizontally. <coughs> well, if relative to the train the light is moving forward at c and backwards at c, then it would make sense, maybe, that the light moving backwards is going slower, it's going c minus v, this amount. And the light going forwards would be going c plus v, the speed of the train. That's not actually true, so when you look at this picture, I want you to understand that that's not what happens. We talked about that in the last lesson. But that is what seems like it should happen, and to explain why, some new changes to, to how we understood physics had to be made. And so along comes a guy named Einstein, and he has a thought experiment. And a thought experiment, he was famous for his thought experiments. A thought experiment is an experiment carried out in the imagination. So 
So there's no actual experiment being done. Usually it's something that couldn't be done using our existing technology, an experiment that we couldn't actually do. But you can explore what should happen in your mind. And this is to examine the logic behind a hypothesis. The logic behind a hypothesis. Now, when you have a theory, there's um, something called a postulate, and usually you will make postulates to build your theory. <coughs> so a postulate is a statement that we assume is true in order to develop a theory. So you can postulate that something is true. You say, let's postulate that the sky is blue. And then we'll build a theory based on that postulate to try to explain what's going on. So these two pieces um, are just introduced so that we can talk about Einstein's theory, which was, of course, a very, very famous um, theory that turned out to change the, the shape of physics. So Einstein's theory here was the theory of special relativity. This is, you know, his, his first big theory. Of course, he had many. But this is a special theory of relativity. And it was published... in 1905. So more than 100 years ago now, 110 years ago actually. And in Einstein's theory, he had two postulates, and these two postulates, if they were both true, meant we had to really change how physics works. Postulate one <coughs> is called the principle of relativity. The principle of relativity. <clears throat> we talked about that above. That is the idea that the laws of <coughs> sorry of physics <coughs> are the same in all inertial frames. So that was a pretty safe postulate to make. That was how we viewed physics at the time, that <coughs> everybody believed that in any inertial fl frame, the laws of physics are all the same. And one um, aspect of that is that it's actually, if that's true, it's impossible, absolutely impossible for us to tell whether we are moving or not moving. Any inertial frame, all of physics should look the same. So I have no way of saying right now whether I am not moving relative to some absolute point. And that sort of makes sense, because the way we understand relativity, we say there is no fixed point. There is no point that's not moving. Everything needs to be moving relative to something else. OK, so postulate two is the speed of light principle. And this postulate says, in at least one inertial frame, in at least one inertial frame, the speed of light, the speed of light, in a vacuum, the speed of light in a vacuum is independent of the light source's motion.
That's the second postulate. And that as well, when he, when he said that, you know, people sort of said, yeah, that makes sense. That seems to be what's happening in terms of how we understand electromagnetism, um, in terms of how we understand a lot of what's going on. But when you put these two postulates together and really look at all the implications, you find out that actually classical physics doesn't work anymore. If you, if you say that both of these two things need to be true, you break classical physics. And so you need to come up with a whole new idea of how, <coughs> how space works, how time works, how speed works, and that is the theory of relativity that Einstein developed. So, um, to put it all together here, the two postulates, the special theory of relativity says that all, <coughs> all physical laws are the same in all inertial frames and the speed of light is independent of the motion of the light source or its observer. Okay. Now this lesson has been a lot of writing. I'm sorry about that. But we're just setting the stage here. This is the special theory of relativity. It's, it's those ideas. But what we're going to look at next is what that actually makes happen. All the, all the sort of math and the funny things that happen because of that postulate. There you go. I hope you enjoy the rest of the, the homework there.